Hello and welcome to Platypus Scotsman. This is the third installment of the build on this. Kind of going to finish things off and try to cover things that I missed in the first two builds because uh, there were some things that I missed. Uh, there was so much that I covered in this that um, I just, I thought I covered things and I didn't. So I went back and tried to cover things that I thought were relevant in this build, but there's so much to it. Uh, but I am in the end pleased with it. But anyway, if you want to see progress pictures or pictures of things that I do, you can go over, hop over to Instagram at Platypus Scotsman and check that out there. But anyway, let's get into this video, shall we? On the paneling, what I've discovered I like to do is I want to bevel all the edges that are showing outwards. In other words, take the crisp edge off that you, you cut and just kind of lightly sand all of them, all the uh, four edges to a 45, unless you're going to butt up against something else. And even then I do that too. I don't do it on everything, but most of the paneling I'm doing that on, I just think it looks better. It also catches the light a little bit better. And then just glue them on. I cut some pipes and sand them off to where they're smooth and I want to insert them now. And I'm going to use the bottom for a guy because I've noticed the top isn't really lined up as well, but there's a way to cheat that and make it look nice. And then I'm just trying to find the flattest end to put on the bottom. I want to put the outside ones on first or the edge. I'm going to kind of line it up with this piece right here, this little edge right here. I want to put a little bit of weld on, let it set up just a little bit and then make sure it's lined up straight up and down, at least by eyeballing it. And then put more on. You can still manipulate it a little bit when it's still trying to set up. Uh, so it's, that's kind of one of the advantages of it. Get the other one set in. Kind of line it up, make sure it's straight and down. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball them where I want them, just kind of get the spacing. Pin them down. Get a little bit of weld on in there. Make sure it's where I want them to be. glue the bottom down where I'm not going to put a lot of pressure with my brush to ac accidentally shift them. And then once that's kind of settled in, then I can put my brush on the rest of it. There you go. Now I'm going to cut the rest of the pieces and hopefully line them up. I'm going to line them up one at a time and just hopefully I get it to where they look decent. like so, and then let that solidify a little bit. I thought I cut them long enough to where they were gonna bleed off the bottom a little bit, but it looks like it's a little short, so. But in the long run, when it's all said and done, it won't really matter a whole lot. And there you go. I'm gonna glue some pieces to the bottom and put some magnets in it, just so I can remove them and paint them and uh, it's just gonna be easier access to do things. So what I'm doing is I punch some holes with the, where's that, the hole punch and made some square styrene, uh, two pieces equal about the thickness of the magnet when it's embedded into the um, plastic. And now I'm just gonna put two pieces of plastic on, stack them on each other, glue them in. I've just dipped it in just so, I get a really good coverage. I'm kind of putting it as close to the hole as possible. That way I can use glue. Just one more place for me to glue the magnet in. And 
Out of all these pieces, that's the one that I lose with my tweezers, oh well. So now this piece is done. I wanna make sure I put the magnets all in the same polarity. So I'm just inserting that one. And then I'm just gonna put some gel glue on it. I'm gonna get my paintbrush and get some weld on on it and just liberally put some on each side. Get a piece of plastic, styrene, put on top. Then once it's all dry, I'll go back with some more gel glue and just glue the sides really well and make sure it's adhered. But that's what I'm gonna do and then I'll glue these into the bottom of the pieces and that way they have good solid mounts. All right, I have the riser built. It's kind of mapped on here where I want it to be. Uh, I have the magnets in there. They're not glued yet and I circled where I, where I want them. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue these in and they're pretty sturdy, between, so uh, even with the plastic uh, in between them. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use some magnets I already have, get the right polarization, glue that, pull that out. Now I know where I, where I want it to be. Put a dab of glue there, get a magnet, let it drop in. Get the other one, pull that one out. Put a dab of glue, get another magnet, and pretty easy. Oops, wrong side. Well, I got it anyway. Now I do want to frame something around this, so when I put this piece on, it'll kind of match up because you can shift it around and kind of get it cockeyed. And on some piece, on, on the other piece it'll matter because there's pipes so you want them lined up. So I'll be doing that. But anyway, just let those dry. I'll put more glue on them to reinforce them. Pretty easy. I've done stuff like this before where I put ribs up and this is just how you do a rounded edge. Put a bunch of ribs up that are 45 on one side and then uh, 90 on the other. And I've already glued this and what I'm gonna do is just start, slowly start going around and pressing it down and then glue it, make sure it's on the ribs. Not go too fast, um, but you wanna make sure this first part is really secure before you start doing this, and just make sure it's pressed in. And you might have to hold it down just to get a good uh, bond, but I wanna make sure there's no seams or no gaps in the part that I'm doing right now. And I just wanna make sure it's, it's something you don't wanna rush, just cause you wanna make sure you get it down. And also push down the top too so it doesn't uh, start to ride up on you. This is another good use for this magnet jig just to hold this down as well and make sure everything's all snug. And then just continue around. You don't wanna do it on the green mat, like I said before, you'll end up gluing your, this, uh, your plastic to your green mat because it'll seep through invariably. Anyway, I'm gonna continue doing this and then get back to you. This is the base for the towers and how I'm gonna do the interior of all this, uh, I kind of struggled a little bit with, but I did the outer wall, just like I did before, I put braces up, did the outer wall, and then I just traced this and gave myself a little bit of leeway on it, uh, as far as, when I wanna cut it, I'm gonna get cut it a little bit wider than what it is. And then I just traced it, kind of did a reverse on the inside, so I kind of have that, but I don't have enough styrene, so I'm gonna be short a little bit, so I'll just, do some patchwork and fix it up, not that big of a deal. And, uh, but I'm just gonna cut this out and I'm not gonna follow the line here. I will on the inside, but not on the outside because I want it to overlap a little bit. But on the inside, the interior wall is gonna be higher on that one, so that's all I'm gonna do there. That's just what I did, I just kind of traced it and then just reversed it uh, on how I did this. Now the cut piece is down here, I just put this on top of it and a side effect I didn't realize was is the magnets are actually holding it down for me, so that's nice. So now I'm just going along the overlapped edge and gluing this down. So yeah, the magnets is a byproduct I wasn't aware of. So that's nice. Don't have to worry about it shifting on me and it puts pressure, constant pressure down on top of it, so that's good. And there you go. So what I'm doing now is I'm making some end pieces that are gonna go in here. And what I did is I put the borders up on three walls 
uh, like I've done in the past, and then I put a T in the middle to uh, gauge the thickness, which is a half inch. I want that's how thick I want this piece to be, and that was the difficulty I was running into. So what I did uh, is I put up three walls, um, like it shows here, and then this allows me to insert this piece to where it lines up everything, and it gives me the thickness I want. So I, all I have to do now is put pressure on these pieces right here and then secure them in with, and just, well, and secure them in with a uh, weld on. Then hold this back one here, secure it on. So what I did is I just did it the typical way of putting it in my, in my uh, uh, magnet jig and did that, put it down, put the walls up, made sure they were stripping down and made sure there was an overlap on this side so I had room to, to work with on the other side. And now that gives me the piece that I want, the sides are lined up, the thickness is what I want straight across. So it does all that. Now I have to just do like I did on the big piece and start putting in pieces, cutting it down and filing it, and I have the piece that I want. And it'll go right here on the end, like so. So there's been a couple ways I've been doing the pipe work on this. One is with the candle and then just plastic tubing and just get it warm to where it's not really too, like, you don't want to have it distorted and then just kind of rotate it above it. Then just use the table as a, for a 90 degree angle, get the 90 degree or whatever angle you want to do. And just when you're using flame, just have parental supervision so you don't burn yourself or burn something down. Just find a place where I want the pipe to go. This is a little long, um, but I guess it could work over here. Still a little long. So I'm going to cut the bottom off down here. And then just kind of guess how long I want it, which right about here works. I get my well on number three. I'm just going to rotate and just dip it, dip the end in, and just hold it in place. Wait till it sets up. Then get my weld on for on a brush, and just do the other end. Make sure it's pressed down. So that was one method of how I did the pipes. The other method is I cut them to angles. So I measure like this, or I measure over here, or I'd get an angle. It just all depends where I want it. So this one right here, just have this flat end up against that. Mark it. I'm going to mark it a little long, uh, just because I found that if I don't and it's too loose, then I have problems like over here, and there's a couple other ones that have gaps on them. And then I'll just get my X-Acto knife. This one's uh, thin enough I can use my X-Acto blade. Other one's a little bit thick, so I use the saw. Just kind of rotate it. My blade starts to go through it and then cut it. Just kind of trim it up so it's flat. It's a little long. So what I'm gonna do in this case, instead of trimming it down, I'm just use an emery board and just kind of sand it a little bit. Not too much because I've because I've gone too far and then it just kind of screws it up. All right, so it fits like that. It's really snug. Get my weld on. Just, just brush it on the joints. And because it's thick, I wanna do it a few extra times. So I do want to explain some things over here. So I did have some, I do have some pipes coming right down here on the bottom of this where the TIE fighter piece is. I had this long pipe. I bent it the same way. This is just a piece of pipe that comes out that I just cut the on an angle to make it uh, have, be more interesting. But right here I had some lining up issues to do. So I had to line them up and I just did different things. I bent them in different directions, but I had this one that I wanted to make look like it went down in. So all I did is got a larger pipe and just fit it so it goes down like that and just all I have to do is just slightly adjust it and it fits right in so it looks like it's there. And then all these little pipes right here, I just kind of did a mishmash of different things where it looked like they continued through this piece of plastic right here and then went into all the other pipe work. This is the only one that's really critical to line up just because you want it to look, line up right here and make it look fairly decent. So initially on this piece right here, I had them all really snug together, but I, as I started assembling, I wanted variation. I finally realized that I wanted a little bit more gaps. It gave it more interest. And so that's all I did is I just had more gaps. I would do a, a, a cut an angle like this, cut these little pieces off here, and then I would just get little square pieces and attach and just different things on it. On this piece right here, just put some three in a row just to give it some more interest. And on these kind of pieces right here, I would, I would just put it in the smaller, uh, smaller, uh, <laughs> the smaller portions of the paneling. I thought that looked nicer. Uh, that was just kind of my idea behind that. And I, 
I wouldn't do the, the, those types of paneling everywhere. And I didn't put little pieces everywhere either. Uh, just because uh, I didn't want these to be the primary thing. I wanted them to be points of interest. So that's why I did those. All right, see how there's ridges on this that overlap? Well, the idea behind it now is to sand them down to where they're smooth. See, now you can see that it's smooth once you sand it, sand it. And I'll just do some finish up on this side right here, and then I'll finish up on this, this right here. But yeah, so now that's why you want to overlap and put a lot of glue so you can just do a sand and uh, make it really smooth. So this antenna piece right here is the landing gear to the A10 with a sheet with a styrene rod. And I'm going to make some of those and put on top of one of the towers. So these are a bunch of pieces I've already trimmed and cut up. Uh, this is the landing gear. I think these are the front landing gear to the A10. These are some styrene pieces or some pieces I've had for a while. I think they go to the uh, 148 scale half track. I'm not 100% sure. And then these are just some styrene pieces. And what I want to do is I want to glue some of these long ones onto here. I have kind of have a place for them already. I want to glue it right there. So I'm going to dip this end into my weld on and just kind of make sure it's straight up and down. Let it set up for a second and then I'm going to get my paintbrush and add more weld on just to secure it up. And then I want to take these, these, I also rounded the end off right here and I flattened this out and I'm going to glue that on there. I'm going to stick the end into the weld on, try to get in the center, make sure it's stripping down as best I can. Now what I want to do is I want to take some uh, silver, well, it's, it doesn't have silver or gold, but some 24 gauge bead wire, and I want to wrap it around this one, like I've done right here, just to give it some character. I'm not overly critical on how the spacing is. I really don't care for the most part. Clip it so it has some of this, and kind of bend it towards kind of like a shape like that. That way when I glue it on, I can attach it, uh, glue this to the bottom. So it's a tower like that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna glue it on the end of here, like so, and just hold it down. I just dipped the end in the weld on, and there you go. Now I'm gonna do the other side. Well, that's it on the build videos. Hope you got something out of it. Hope there was something you could use in your hobby and uh, take from it and apply it to your craft and the things that you do. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. I'll be more than happy to help uh, answer any or the best I can. And, uh, and if you want to see more of this, like I said before, you go over to Instagram at Platypus Gossman, check it out. Uh, also, we're setting up a website, platypusgossman.com where it's in its infancy and we're trying just to get it going and we'll have tools and different things that we use and uh, other things like that on there as well if you're so inclined to go visit that. I'd also like to thank all those who support the channel through either subscribing to the channel or giving thumbs up or leaving comments, I appreciate that. But I especially like to thank the patrons who support the channel and are willing to uh, give some of their hard-earned cash to support the channel in any way possible. And 2020 is almost over, uh, and I hope you have a wonderful holiday season, no matter what holiday you ch choose to celebrate. And uh, spend time with your family and friends and uh, those that you care about. And hope your hobby is treating you well. Hope you're having a good time. Starting to get, starting to, uh, get more into Warcry at the moment, so I might deviate and make some Warcry boards because I want something to, to play on other than just a flat board to, or the, the cardboard that comes with it that's painted. Um, trying to think of some ideas, might do some Badlands, Swamps, not really sure yet. Uh, maybe some cobblestone, uh, just trying to th throw things up in the air, what we might do. Anyway, you have a good night and, uh, or a good day or whatever the case may be. But anyway, remember, remember, <laughs> remember what my, 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 hmm. 
Remember what my mother used to always say is anyone can do art. Charlie Blue that. You have a wonderful night. Bye. Parade wave.